I guess the big question is whether we're seeing just a sort of fleeting, um, you know, leadership shift from those, you know, dif disinflationary growth stocks that led the way higher uh, into this year and toward, uh, you know, commodity based companies. Or you think that this is something that might last? Well, I think that this is the trade of the decade. Um, I've been speaking about that for the last few months, that I think that the trade of the decade is long commodities, short technology. Uh, we went into this crisis in Russia um, with the world very underinvested in commodities and relatively overinvested in technology. This crisis has uh, shown the spotlight on the problem with that. Um, and I think that even though prices may ease if we get some de-escalation in this tension, I don't think this trade is going to end anytime soon, and um, it could last uh, for the foreseeable future, which is basically a decade. You know, this would correspond, if it were to happen, and as you point this out in some of your work, with what happened in the 1970s or into the 80s, and then uh, again, of course, uh, in the year 2000 and the decade or so after that. Those were periods when equities in general experienced, you know, a pretty long and grueling bear market. Do you think that that's going to come along with it? Well, I think the price of money is still insanely cheap. So that is something which cushions the fall in equities. Otherwise, equities would be down a lot more. But I do think that this marks uh, the beginning process of a major regime shift. Uh, so it's very interesting that if you look at around the world, a lot of emerging markets that are commodity exporters are, in fact, outperforming this year, uh, even through this crisis. So you have Brazil, Indonesia, these kind of markets that are doing well. And a lot of the technology-heavy markets, uh, such as Korea or even China before that, those are not doing uh, that well. So I think this leadership shift is very fundamental in nature. And even if the fall in equity prices is cushioned by extremely low interest rates, which will rise, but still from a very low level, um, I think that cushions it. But yeah, I think that what we have to focus on here is this major regime shift where the uh, balance of power is shifting back towards the commodity exporters, away from the importers, exactly the mirror image of what happened last decade. So the investment advice, what, is to stick with the commodity-producing countries, buy, buy their stocks, their ETFs, and away from some of the importers that are getting hit, like, like India? What are, the, what are some of the other investor implications? Yeah, I think, you know, that is one very simple investor implication. And I also feel that the great unwind in technology stocks is well underway. And uh, this could yeah, have further to go. I think, as we have discussed in the past, that once bubbles begin to deflate, uh, they typically see a decline of about 70%. Now, whereas the entire tech sector may not be a bubble, there were certainly pockets out there, the unprofitable tech stocks, uh, some of the clean energy stocks. Uh, I think that all those could be down 70% from their peak. Now, some of them are already down 40 to 50%, but we may still have some way to go. So, yeah, staying away from the technology space in general and towards commodity exporting countries like the ones that I mentioned, I think is the way to go for the next few years. Uh, even if that trade appears a bit tactically straight just now, I think strategically that has uh, legs. Rashir, thank you very much. We'll have you back to, uh, to check up on the, uh, the trade of the decade.